Palouse tonight as Washington State is hoping for their first upset of a ranked team in nearly three years. Martin Stadium is going to be filled to capacity, a perfect night for football. Washington State hosting the number two team in the country, the Trojans of USC. Hello again, everybody, along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. Just when the Trojan offense looked like they were going to take another step in their growth, having lost a couple of Heisman Trophy winners <laughs> from last year's team, they lose the best receiver in college football, Dwayne Jarrett, to a shoulder injury. But Pete Carroll, the head coach, says, ah, I'm not worried. Yeah, he's got a little Alfred E. Newman in him, doesn't he? Because at USC, the expectation is if a guy's out, the next guy steps up. For USC today, that's Patrick Turner, a sophomore receiver. Four catches in this young season, he expects to at least double that tonight if you're in the Trojan tradition when it's your turn you take advantage of it but the thing that's really kept USC going this year has been their defense it's been kind of a return to yesteryear okay forget that 2004 they're aggressive they're, they're they're agile they get after the quarterback they limit you in the run game they love what they're doing and they want to put the pressure on Washington State this evening and continue to carry their offense while they get their sea legs well you talk about the USC defense they dominated Washington State last year holding uh, Washington State to just 89 yards passing. You would think that quarterback Alex Brink of the Cougars needs to step up tonight. Well, a normal Alex Brink night is about 250 yards passing and two touchdowns. But his last two ball games against name opponents, Auburn and USC last year, not even 100 yards passing in either game. They need a big night from him. But at Washington State, there's been a renaissance on the defensive end also, led by McCristo, the great Bruce. Bruce, he's had a terrific season thus far. Seven sacks in this young season, five last week against USC. He'll search for the most favorable matchup tonight, depending on which side he wants to go to, to try and introduce himself to John David Booty, the USC quarterback. Well, USC lost to Washington State here in Pullman back in 2002. That's the last Cougar victory in the series. And by the way, since then, USC has gone on to win 48 of the last 50 games. Let's send it down to the third member of our team, Craig Sager with Pete Carroll. Well, Coach, another point of transition for your offense. Dwayne Jarrett out with a shoulder sprain. How does that affect the game plan? Well, it shouldn't affect us at all. We're really counting on Patrick Turner and Chris McFord to do a great job for us today stepping in. What's the philosophy today on the defensive side? Well, they spread you out, you know, so we have to do a real nice job at the point, getting guys covered down and then stay on top. And then they run it well, too. So we got we got our hands full today. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Ryan. All right, thanks a lot, Craig. There's Bill Doby in his fourth year, uh, 17th year at Washington State. Spent nine years as defensive coordinator under Mike Price. He was born in the shadows of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, second most famous graduate of Ball State, next to, of course, <laughs> David Letterman. Capacity crowd on hand, and it's an absolutely perfect night for football. Temperature 76 degrees, no humidity, pretty good breeze, though, 10 to 15 miles per hour, and our forecast is going to be exactly the same. USC won the toss. They have deferred. Washington State will receive the kick. Troy Van Blarkham is going to be kicking it away for USC. He's got a pretty good leg, 19 kickoffs, 17 inside the 20, 14 touchback. Sun could be a factor though, Charles. Yes, it can, and right now the Washington State receivers are looking back into that sun. There you see Daryl Hutsano, the junior out of Spring Valley, California. Brandon Gibson joins him on the goal line. USC undefeated. 3-0 on the year. The only loss for Washington State, Auburn, to open the season. Some are predicting this could be an upset tonight. We will see, and we are underway. Say goodbye to the football. Washington State offense tonight. Alex Brink took over in 2004, made great plays at the line of scrimmage even before the snap. He is so smart when he comes to the line, Charles. He's the heady player, kind of an extension of the coaching staff when he gets on the field. Look for him to try and get his team settled early. You know, I expect him to come out and run the ball in this first play, take a little motion out of it. And don't be surprised if we see Washington State try and get something big early in this series. Well, Dwight Tardy, the redshirt freshman, is going to get the start at tailback. We thought it would be Woolridge. He's been dinged up a little bit. Collins in motion. Tardy, first carry of the ball game. Maybe gets two yards on the play. So trips over the right side. Let's take a look at our Red Lobster starting lineups on the line for Washington State. Injuries have played havoc. They've had to move a lot of people around. Charles Harris, though, is their best blocker at the tackle spot. Skill positions. Keep an eye on number 83, Jason Hill. Arguably the second best wide receiver in the Pac-10. Looking for him to step up tonight. And this is Hill right here. Look for play action here from Washington State. They want to try and get big plays early in this game. They practiced a lot of dipsy doodle yesterday. 
Alex Brink rolling buying some time gets back to the line of scrimmage picks up about four maybe five and a little bit more Brian Cushing on the stop let's take a look at that USC defense they are tops in turnover margin the line there's no seniors on the two deep Lawrence Jackson is a real playmaker linebackers as a group they are the best in the country Ray Mawaluga is a linebacker. He is a very special player, secondary, very young. Two sophomores, a true freshman start. Sophomore Kevin Ellison, he'll be directing traffic back there tonight. Third and short, Ron. A kind of rebuild offensive line for Washington State. Maybe you put the ball in the hands of Alex Brink with some sort of short pass here. They keep it on the ground, Hutsana. Crosses the 40 up to the 42 yard line. First down for the Cougars. Darrell Hutsana, the junior from Spring Valley, California. Watch as Hutsana gets to the corner. He gets a terrific block by number four, Brandon Gibson, his wide receiver, that helps clear the lane. He's the inside guy right here. Watch this block. Watch how he takes the defensive back inside and then off of the cut from another block. Nice running by Darrell Hutsana. Third down and six for Washington State. USC brings four. Great back over the middle, wide open, first down, down to the 44-yard line. The big tight end, Cody Boyd, six foot eight senior out of Bellingham, Washington, his 12th reception of the year. If you can't find Cody Boyd, you're not going to find anyone, are you? At six eight, <laughs> nice job by the offensive line. Plenty of time for Alex Brink, and not only was there plenty of time. What a great throwing lane he had. Totally unobstructed view to deliver it over the middle for the first down. Pick up with 10 on the play. Another first down for the Cougars. Cardi. Inside the 25 to the 20. Loses the football. And I think he got it back. But this has been a problem with this young man. He's put it on the turf the last couple of weeks. This is a Washington State team fumbled 14 times already. They've lost six of those. Like the misdirection. All they want to do is get USC moving one or two steps in the wrong direction, then let the blocking take over. Take them where they want to go. And Dwight Tardy, as you mentioned, partner, he has yeah. dropped the ball going in for touchdowns against Idaho, right? Yeah. And then last week at Stanford. He's got to secure the ball a little bit better because there were more yards to be made on that play. 13 for 18 in the red zone with 12 touchdowns. They're on the 17. Break. Firing. Incomplete. Dangerous pass. Tipped again at the line of scrimmage. Is that Mawaluga? Well, got Mawaluga that? got it again. Watch the pressure up the middle from USC. He has Ray Mawaluga, number 58, Keith Rivers, number 55, behind him. Now, we got to say something, too, that Washington State is not comfortable with their field goal unit. They want to get at the 10-yard line. That's where they say they'll kick the field goal. They still have a couple of yards to go, seven to be exact. <laughs> For them, they're often in four-down territory. That's right. Lorich tripped up, gets down to about the 16-yard line. Looks like he tripped on Andy Roof, his own man, the big right guard. Bill Dova told his team, we win games on Thursday. That's what he told his squad when we were here Thursday. He said, you've got an incredible opportunity facing you, taking on the number two team in the country. And what he means by that is, we've practiced well all week. You polish up on Thursday. All right, you can't, as he said, jumping up and down the tunnel before the game is too late. Get it right in practice beforehand. Jason Hill now part of the wide receiver set to the right. Bumpus on the near side, going deep in the corner for six, overthrown, intended for Hill. See, you know, as you said, Rod, they don't like to kick field goals, but in this situation, you've got to try and give yourself something. It'll be third and ten otherwise, I mean, fourth and ten otherwise. Now you've got to try it. Let's check in with Craig Sager Sags. Well, coaching staff did lose confidence in Langley, who had missed nine of his previous 12 before that game winner against Bailey. But Drew Denning, the former place kicker, Washington State, who recruited him, flew in this week from Seattle. He's worked with him his technique and his confidence. Now this is going to be a 35-yarder. Gary Rogers, the backup quarterback, the holder. Tony Thompson, the snapper. Lauren Longley, the kick, up and away. And it is good. Washington State up on the board first. 
against the number two team in the country. Three to nothing's our score. The Cougars leading the Trojans. <laughs> Who are you kidding? You get kicked out of the library all I the time. I didn't even know where it was. Just like I did by <laughs> Miss Haluska. <laughs> it's going to be a short kick. At the five. Gable still on his feet. Has some running room. Look out. He's got a lot of green in front of him. Steps in front, still on his feet. Gets down to the 40-yard line. 55 yards on the return for C.J. Gabe. USC offense led by quarterback John David Booty. Charles, you'd have to say he's the most patient man in all <laughs> college football. Waited four years for this season. But you talk to him and he says, listen, I played behind two Heisman, you know, a Heisman guy. A couple of Heisman guys, why should I worry about it? Very level head on his shoulders. Don't think for a second. He didn't have some down days, but he managed to fight through them, and now he's, had, now he's getting his opportunity. Let's see if USC Steve goes Smith. for seven right off the bat. Steve Smith, a dangerous receiver. And he's in two. motion. Booty fakes to nobody, steps up in the pocket, goes over the middle of Smith. Got him! Inside the 10 down to the eight-yard line. Because of the, the great kickoff return, the field position was excellent. Everyone's talking how USC's been so methodical this year. I think they're taking the governor off the offense today. I think when they have attack position, that's exactly what they're going to do, and that's exactly what they did on the first play of this drive. The first pass above 25 yards caught by a USC wide receiver this year. Patrick Turner wide to the left, first and goal. Booty goes in the end zone. Touchdown, USC! Chris McFoy! McFoy's short motion looks similar to what Steve Smith did on the play before, but the play action sucked the linebackers and secondary up, and that is the first touchdown in the career of Chris McFoy. He was so upset because his younger brother, Ryan, is a safety at Arizona State. He scored a touchdown his second ball game ever on an interception return. <laughs> a little, little uh, sibling rivalry there. The extra point, Mario Danello is good. Didn't take USC long to score. They have taken a step in their growth of their offense. They lead 7-3. 24 straight Pac-10 wins yeah, over the last couple of years for strong. USC. They've taken the 7-3 lead over so Washington State. <laughs> now let's see how Washington State can respond because when things have happened in the past bad, they've always said, oh my goodness, what else? Yeah, I think their touchstone this year is Baylor thus far. Things happened bad late, but they battled back with an 81-yard drive before it ended with a more likely game-winning field goal. No chance of returning that. Great three of six throwing already. Darrell Hootsana in the backfield. The transfer from Grossmont College, Junior College. And he has it. That's that fast defense. Brian Cushing, you talk about the elephant defense. Normally, USC has played a 4-3 because of the wealth of linebackers, and Cushing was considered a linebacker. They've gone to this 3-4, and they call it the elephant defense. Yes, that's Nick Holt onto the far side. That's Ken Norton Jr. in front of him. Nick Holt with the bald head there, and there's Pete Carroll, the head coach who gave up his defensive coordinator responsibilities to bring Nick Holt back to the staff. We'll talk more after this play. Boyd, the tight end, moving in the backfield. Tardy, three-step drop, gets it to Jason Hill. Hog tied as he gets to the 28, and the penalty flag is added to that. Really nice route by Jason Hill. The ball's delivered well, working against Terrell Thomas, number 28. Look how he catches it with his hands, and then there's some face mask. Nice call by the line judge. Jeff Robinson right on the play. See right there, yep. the left hand, excellent call. That should be a 15-yard personal foul, not a five-yard grasping the mask and letting it go. And yeah, that's what it's personal going to be. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 28. 15-yard penalty, the end of the run, first down. Gain of 11, plus 15, a 26-yard pickup as we look at Jason Hill, 
senior out of San Francisco. Think about it. This guy didn't have any receptions his freshman year. Now he's on the verge of breaking all of Hugh Campbell's marks for receptions and yards. Back to back 1,000 yard seasons coming into his senior campaign. I hope he's going to be okay. Went to the sideline for a little checkup after that tough tackle. First and 10 inside the 50. Brink throws it out of the flat. Bumpus again. He's having a yeoman's night tonight catching the football. That's his fifth reception already this evening. And that was pretty much the same play USC ran, mm -hmm. but with better results. And Michael Bumpus got by with a little help from his friends on that play because he got a great block out wide from a fellow wide receiver on the corner of USC. Pick up of eight on the play. Second and short, 57 seconds left in the first. Pitch back, Kutsana got a block, has the first down and about a yard to spare. Terry Harris, sophomore out of Notre Dame High School in California, comes up with a stop. Ron, I'm going back to something you mentioned earlier. Last year, I mean, things kind of went against Washington State. They sagged a little bit. This year, they've got that, that spirit to stay in the ball game. Finish has been their motto since the end of last year. It's written on T-shirts. As Bill Dova says, we've even got in the bathroom stalls. <laughs> well, tonight they're getting a better start also, hoping to finish off this game later on. Don't forget, last year USC spanked them in the first quarter. The game was over before it even started. Bumpus with another reception. It's inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. And you have to say that last year, this Washington State team was completely embarrassed in this football game, Charles. But, uh, without a doubt, you give up 745 yards in total offense, over 400 passing, over 300 rushing, mm -hmm. and that's what, you, that's, that's what you end up with, embarrassment. And that's the way the first quarter is going to come to an end. Instead of trailing by a bundle like they did in 2005, the Cougars are within four, and they're facing second down and two. We're in Pullman, 7-3, USC leading Washington State. Washington State trailing the number two team in the country, USC, 7-3, along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager. I'm Ron Thulin. Second down and two for Washington State. The offense trying to ring the bell here. Second and short gives you a lot of options on offense, doesn't it? That's right. Tardy's in the backfield. Got it. Breaks into the secondary, gets inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line for Tardy. Is this a rebuild offensive line? Watch. Guys that are playing positions that they haven't played before. Uh, yeah, I like what they're doing here. Watch right in the middle. For the center, he controls the nose tackle. Feely Moala. And Tardy's able to cut back against the blocks of Andy Roop, number 74, Charles Harris, number 55. Here's Mike Levinsell, the offensive coordinator. He doesn't call the plays. But that's Tim Rosenbaum, the quarterback's coach, called them. But they both get together to work out the game plan. Pick up with 10 on the play. In the red zone again, Washington State. They scored the last time. Great. Looks left, now looking right. Dumps it off to the safety valve. Hill tries to reach towards the 15-yard line of the market at about the 15 and a half. Malaluga on the stop again. One of the things that I think is standing out, Charles, is that last year we saw USC just dominate in time of possession, which kept that defensive Washington State on the field. Now it's the other way around. In fact, you look at time of possession, almost plus five minutes right now for Washington State. I like the note, Washington State last year, last in the Pac-10 in time of mm -hmm. possession. That was something they wanted to improve on this year. You can see what it is right now, and they're not afraid to throw in this situation. Cardi. That's called being detonated back at the 17-yard line by Chris Barrett, the junior out of Tustin, California. Toss sweep. There's Alfred to center. But look at Barrett. Not really blocked on that play. And they always say, if you're an unblocked defensive player, you should make a big play. Mm -hmm. Chris Barrett did just that. Converted tight end, starting to feel confident at the defensive tackle position. Now Bumpus and Hill go wide to the left on third and eight. Looking, deep out, looking for Hill. In and out of his hands. Covered by Kerry Harris. He was there, Charles, a little bit too high. And once again, looking right up into the sun. I thought they had it because near the end of the play, 
Kerry Harris, number seven, stumbled, and that gave, that gave the opportunity for Hill. Now he's looking right back into the sun. Not sure if that played against him or not as he reached back for the football. Harris came into the picture late. And look who's back on the field. This is going to be another 25-yarder. The good thing is he's got one under his belt, Ron. He's got one under his belt. His confidence should be up. Unlikely this is a 35-yarder. 0 for 2 in this distance this year. Good snap. Good hole on the way and it is good Langley may be getting a little bit of confidence two for two tonight and that cuts the USC lead down to one one of the prettiest cities in all of Washington Pullman Washington right now they trail by one Gable and McFoy back for USC that's CJ Gable a true freshman Straight ahead running up over the 25 to about the 27. Going back to the fullbacks, this is this is what's happened when they have a torn ligament by a Hancock, dislocated fracture anchor, pile drill. Avili broke his leg last week, and he had a huge game last week receiving. That was his first start, Stanley Havili. Ryan Padrell, who's played linebacker and fullback and a little bit of tailback. Horrible injury, and Brandon Hancock. He's actually talking about coming back for a bowl game, mm -hmm. working out so well, rehabilitating his knee. Well, Pete says, losing the fullbacks doesn't change their offense at all. Throw it out of the flat, pass is complete. Smith gets away from the first tackle, steps out of bounds at about the 36-yard line, we'll call it. Hussein Abdullah on the tackle. The brother, of course, Hamza, played at Washington State, also the member of the Denver Broncos now, and he's actually here at the game. Now, did Steve Smith's knee touch, or did it stay up? Ooh. That's a duh. Uh, One more time. One more time. He's down. I think he's down. But he was. But he's so quick. They're not challenging it. <laughs> no challenge at all. He's so quick, Ron, he was able to sell it. Right in front of Washington State's bench, too. Straight ahead running. Pick up of about four on the play. Washington again. You know, as you talk about Steve Smith, we came into the game saying, who would step up for Dwayne Jarrett? Would it be Patrick Turner, the freshman? All right, Craig Sager talked with Pete Carroll on the sideline. Pete mentioned Ryan McFoy. I think Steve Smith's thinking tonight, have you forgotten that I'm a premier receiver? I caught three touchdowns in the Orange Bowl in the national championship mm -hmm. game. I caught two on three catches last year against Washington State. Instead, they give it a Moody. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he's dropped. The first hit came from Steve Dildine, the senior out of Graham Washington, from that linebacker spot, his second tackle of the night. And what he did so well was he stayed at home. Look to the right side of your screen because it's a cutback run by Emmanuel Moody. But Steve Dildine did not overrun the play in pursuit. Stayed in his responsibility area and was able to make the play. Third down and three as Smith goes wide to the right, Turner to the near side. Washington State brings four. Booty the quick out, pass caught. First down to Chris McFoy. It is a perfect night for football in Coleman, Washington, and that's where we are right now as the number two team in the country, USC, leads the Cougars of Washington State 7 6. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcoming you to a game that's got a lot of flavor and a lot of red jerseys out in the stands tonight. This is this like a, a Nebraska game almost. A predominant color for both squads. And now Washington. Shades of red. There you go, Washington. First and ten back in the backfield. Thompson and Davis, two tight ends. Moody looking down the middle. Has a man, Smith, caught inside the 20, inside the 10. Knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line. Smith's third catch of the night. Perfect pass, though, by John David Booty. The difference here, Ron, you remember earlier when Steve Smith broke open and John David Booty threw the ball on the line and it hit the DB in the back? Remember that? Yep. On this play, he had so much time, it allowed Steve Smith to clear the middle and took him away from traffic, and John David Booty able to put it on the line. 
Davis to the goal line. Re or Washington, I should say. Touchdown, USC. Watch everyone. That time they pulled Drew Radovich, number 60, on a trap block. And that was just good, hard running by Chauncey Washington. He's the thumper at tailback that Pete Carroll's been looking to have. Right, he's the guy that he wants in there, kind of that Lendale white sort mm -hmm. to get the tough yards inside. 12 for 13 on the year for Danello. Of course, his dad played in the National Football League. Good snap, chip shot kick. And it is good. Chauncey Washington, his second rushing touchdown of the year, and USC goes back up 14 to 6. <laughs> Gibson and Utsada back for Washington State. They trail 14 to 6. In case you just joined us, they opened up the scoring with a field goal, took a 3 0 lead. USC marched right back, made it 7 3. Another Cooper field goal, cut it to 1. USC's just added another touchdown. That's where we are right now. Line drive, end over end kick. Eight yards deep. Gibson's going to take a seat. Usada jumps over one of his own men, gets up to about the 30 yard line, pick up a four on the play. Clock goes to three minutes in the first half. Kyle Moore, his first tackle of the night, sophomore of Kathleen, Georgia. It's a key down in this drive, Ron, as the clock ticks under three minutes. USC's defense, if they can make a big play here, they might start thinking about a little clock management themselves in order to try and get the ball back before the half ends. Gibson, Bumpus, Hill to the near side. Great look at Hess. Tardy is a safety valve. He doesn't mind running. He does. Dives for the first down. Takes a shot by Terrell Thomas, but he should have the first down. That's one of the things that looks like Thomas may have gotten the worst of it. One of the things that coaches were telling us, he doesn't like to slide. No, and what a what a nice play by Alex Brink, the quarterback. Because he goes left, and he could have tossed the ball to Tardy in the in the flat, but he decided to use him as a blocker. But, oh, nice job there by yeah. Dwight Tardy. Excellent block on Kyle Moore, number 84. Hill comes to the near side, 2 0 1 to play in the first half. Hardy cuts back inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. Pick up a four. You talk, Lou got on the stop, Charles. Ron, you talked about can they take advantage? Well, I think that Washington State's confidence is fine. Even if they don't score here. Mm -hmm. To me, the drive's not that important in terms of scoring. But you play it safe but not to have anything bad happen. Make sure happen. nothing bad happens. Yeah. But here's the key if they do score, it sends a message to USC that, hey, we're not going away here. Yeah. We're here for the duration. A second down and six. Here comes USC. Great look and throws a deep out. Caught. Gibson inside the 25-yard line. The market at the 21-yard line. But he didn't get out of bounds. They were supposed to. I thought they were going to keep the clock going. I guess they got to stop it now for the first down and reset the chains. That's why the clock stopped well, here. Dallas Sarch was one on one with Gibson out there, the linebacker on Gibson. That's a tough cover. Tough matchup. I don't care how good a cover guy you are. Dallas Sarch works with the secondary too. But it is a tough, it is a tough matchup to go against a jitterbug wide receiver. And that was a big play for Washington State. Kyle Moore comes in. Lawrence Jackson comes out on the defensive line for USC. 107, clock is moving. Break. Straight drop. Here comes the pressure. Looking. Tries to throw it away. Pass is incomplete. Bumpus was sitting on his Bumpus. <laughs> couldn't come up with it. They couldn't get the ball to pinball in open space. That would allow him to catch it and make a second move. He was trying to catch it going out of bounds. I think he may have been looking for Jed Collins, one of the tight ends on that pattern, but then the rush came and he had to go to plan B. Now Hill goes wide to the left. Collins at the tight end position on the left side, Bumpus near side. Hill's the guy that's their big playmaker and wide receiver. Go, 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 go. On the ground. Tardy breaks it inside the five, down to the three yard line. First and goal, Washington State. What an effort by the Richard freshman, Dwight Tardy. Look at the blocking. 
Nice job again by Kenny Alford, number 69, the center, because he moved the nose tackle. Feely Moala out of the way and opens up a lane for Dwight Tardy. A 19-yard run. See that right in front of you? He took 75 out of the play. And then the rest of the guys walled off the defenders from USC. Tardy trying to make the cut to get into the end zone before Kerry Harris knocks him down. Well, that's one thing USC's had problems with on this drive. They had the 22 play, 22-yard uh, play by Gibson for Washington State, the 19-yarder by Tardy. Two big plays in this drive, plus the pass interference penalty. First and goal from the two. And now, Ron, anything less than six points yeah. is a disappointment for Washington State. Three tight ends. They give it to Hill. Tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage. No way. Dallas Sarch is the one who had the penetration. He's going to lose a yard. And we're going to have another timeout with 46 seconds left. Well played by Dallas Sarch. Watch to the top of your screen, number 42. He made sure he turned the play inside. That's called spilling a play. Even if you miss the tackle, which frustrated Dallas Sartz, he spilled it where the help was. Coming inside out, his defensive line. They're not afraid to throw it in this position. They go three wide, four wide receivers set. Second and goal from the four. Great, looking, tries to force it inside to Gibson. Incomplete, he takes a shot. That'll bring up another down. Third down and goal. Taylor Mays on the coverage. It's a tough one right into traffic with USC. And they covered it well as Keith Rivers, 55, Taylor Mays, 29, Ray Malaluga, Malaluga, number 58, ball ready to lower the boom. Third down and four, clock is stopped, your goal from the four, 42 seconds left. Em empty set again, Ron. What would you think about quarterback draw here with Alex Brent? Why not? The splits are wide for USC, but instead he goes deep in the end zone. Touchdown, Jason Hill! This is kind of a kind of showed slant and then went to the fade route. Great job because Terrell Thomas played the slant, but he wasn't able to play the second part. That's the old second move. And in that situation, Jason Hill, one of the most prolific wide receivers in Pac-10 history, adds another touchdown to his already lengthy resume. His fourth touchdown reception of the year. He graduated in three and a half years. Still wanted to play for Washington State this year, and it's paying off with this. This is a big score for him. A great job by the offensive line, allowing no penetration. Now, Washington State is going to go for two. Both teams, by the way, with one timeout left. 14-12 USC by a deuce. I understand why they're doing it. I've just never been a proponent of chasing points early in a ball game. Yeah. I would kick the extra point, make it a one-point game. Just for a confidence factor. I, mean, I just want to feel good at the end of my drive. Doesn't mean they won't still feel good. Then. <laughs> yeah, interesting formation. Boyd Gibson. Great look at wide open in the end zone. Cody Boyd, he threw it away from him. He was wide open. Oh, that got away from Bill Dova. They both go through the same tunnel, so USC will go out first. They have the lead by two. Here's Bill Dova with Craig Sager. Well, Coach, they have the lead, but you have the momentum and the confidence. Talk about your team's performance that happened. Well, I think they did well. We gave up. The thing we can't do is give up big plays. And we gave up two of them on their long touchdown, on their long pass plays. If we get that corrected at halftime and there's underneath digs, I think we'll be okay. All right, thanks a lot. 14 to 12, our score at intermission. When we come back, Mark Fine will have all the highlights from this afternoon's game. He'll be in the studio in Atlanta. Welcome back to TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. We are set to start the second half and we've got a game with USC, the number two team in the country, holding out of that two-point advantage over Washington State. Hello again, along with Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin. You know, the last couple of days, we always talked about how Alex Brink, the quarterback for Washington State, needed to play within the offense and manage the game. I think he'd get an A-plus on that grade from the first half. Without a doubt, because they've gotten the run game going for him, and he's been very efficient throwing the ball, not asking him to do too much. 
but when they do ask him to throw it, he's been on target. Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers and some of the highlights from the first half of play, and it was a good one at that, Charles. It was because when you look at the rush yardage, Washington State with 84 yards in the first half, USC's given up less than 61 all year long per ball game. Passing game, Washington State's been efficient. USC, the big strikes to Steve Smith over the middle. A big part of those 153 yards, two turnovers. Washington State to the good against USC. They've turned one of those turnovers into a field goal. Right, let's check in with Craig Sager. Sager, what did Pete Carroll say? Well, actually, he was a little perturbed about the way the situation went in the first half, not so much the score, but the fact that he said he only ran 23 plays on offense. He said the turnovers and the penalties meant that the offense didn't have a chance really to get on track. A couple of big plays, he goes, but 23 plays, that's not our game. We need the defense to do something to turn the ball over, to give it back to our offense so we can actually play the game the way we know we can. Well, you're right, and he was way down in time of possession also, Six. He was minus five minutes in time of possession as Washington and say just seemed to dominate. Sounds like he was channeling Steve Spurrier. Yeah. Get me the ball back for my offense. He did. C.J. Gable. He'll take the opening kick of the second half. Gets hit hard as he gets up to the 18-yard or 22-yard line. <laughs> Moody and Washington in the backfield again together. Moody. Looking for a block. Cuts inside. Here he goes. He's got room as he crosses the 50. Being chased as he's pulled down from behind at the 35. It's the blocking outside. The receivers. All right, they always talk about catching the ball. Steve Smith, number two. Might have got away with a little bit of a hold there, but what a great cut by Moody inside. And then when he reverses field, good job by Brackenridge spilling it back inside, which allowed Greg Trent, number 52, to run it down a 48-yard gallop for Emmanuel Moody. That's the longest of his collegiate career. And they are in Washington State territory. Moody, penalty flag is thrown as he is sacked. Lance Brodus, the junior out of Woodland Hills, California, Taft High School, comes up with a sack. He's got two and a half now on the year, but we do have a penalty flag. Right side of your screen, number nine, Brodus working on the All-American Sam Baker. Terrific spin move inside. Great job, because when oh, you beat man. Baker, you've done offense, something. Number 79. Penalties declined. Down will be two. I'm really surprised that he got called for holding. Yeah. He never had a chance on that play. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be, make a joke here, but Lance Brodus spun inside so quickly. I'm not sure he had a chance to grab any cloth. There you can see the sack com comparison. 20 already, third in the NCAA for Washington State. USC's now allowed six this year, two tonight. Washington in the backfield, second and 16. Again, the play action. They throw it back to Fred Davis. Tripped up as he gets to about the 38-yard line. Tyron Brackenridge. He's got five stops this evening. Already an interception. What a, what a nice play on the corner. Because as this play unfolds, it becomes Tyron Brackenridge, number 12, against the tight end, Fred Davis. Open field, one-on-one, -on -one, and he puts the big fella down. And he rolls. Because if not, we're coming up probably with about third and short yeah. instead of third and 11. Now Brad Walker, Steve Smith wide to the right. Third down and 11. Washington tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. And Christo Bruce again on the stop. He has five this evening to go along with the sack. You know, I know a lot of people won't like that call from USC, but actually it takes an element of courage to make that call. What I mean by that is that you know they're coming after you, right? You know the brush is coming. Sometimes you call that draw and it pops and you look like a genius. Instead, you end up with fourth and favorable position. And the way Pete Carroll does things, you go for it. You go for it. Now they're two of five on fourth down tonight. Brittingham, the fullback, wide to the right. This is Smith right here in the slot. He's their go-to. And Fred Davis to the right. Booty looks, fires, caught Smith. First down, Trojan. The 25-yard line. Greg Trent 
was one on one with him. That's a tough cover for the sophomore. And what Lane Kiffin did was put his guy number two in a great position because you mentioned it, Ron. He made a linebacker match up with him in the coverage. Because even if it's not man to man, he put him in an area where a linebacker would have responsibility for him. That's nice play calling by USC. Pick up with 12 on the play. Once again, they've had the pass interference. And that play on fourth down and 10. First and 10 from the 24 for USC. Moody looking, still looking, firing, pass complete at the 13-yard line again. It is Steve Smith. Six receptions, over 120 yards tonight for the senior. You know what's nice about that throw? Is that John David Booty made a decision that either my receiver is going to catch this or no one is. Yeah. Nice elusiveness by John David Booty. Getting out of the pocket, squaring and throwing against his body. And he made it to where only Steve Smith had an opportunity to catch the ball because he had number 37, Eric Frampton, on his back. He has more yards receiving tonight than he did for the previous three games. Washington straight ahead running. Down to about the seven-yard line. You know, you talk about Steve Smith. We talked about him. But here's a guy that does all the little things. And we've been watching him tonight. He has good routes. He makes the tough catches, which we've just seen. He combines speed and hands. You know, Steve Smith just does about everything. He does, and he does it well, but he has to do it quietly. Before Dwayne Jarrett, there was Mike Williams here. That Steve Smith had to be overshadowed by. Gary Colbert was here. Now he thinks he has a chance to shine. Here comes Jarrett. <laughs> yeah. So tonight is his night. Five wide receivers set now for the Trojans on second and six from the seven. Booty over the middle. Touchdown, USC, Steve Smith. His second touchdown reception of the year, first of the night. Okay. Here's your matchup right there. Steve Smith on the linebacker, Greg Trent, because Lane Kiffin spread things out. So now he's set to go. He's just going to work an inside route, and he's got it right there. Because once he went past one linebacker, he just had a second one. Inside route, easy throw, six points. And the extra point is true. The extra point is good. USC nine play drive 99 yards capped off with Steve Smith second touchdown reception of the year. Steve Smith having an incredible night seven receptions 100. He came into the night with 12 receptions and 129 yards and I wonder if Dwayne Jarrett's all of a sudden getting real healthy back home in Los Angeles. Well you know he's happy for his teammate and what he thinks at home is when I get healthy and come back, now we've got Steve on track, too. Yeah. We can really wreak some havoc in the secondary. He had three receptions for 32 yards on that drive alone, which once again covered 99 yards after the great punt coverage. Key play, of course, was the fourth down and also the pass interference. And again, the kick will go out of the end zone. Now it's first and ten. Balls moved up to the 35 with four minutes to play in the third. Run. Harris is the one who penetrated, made the stop. Fans, it's time now for our Affleck trivia question. Answer our question was what school in a BCS conference? Now remember that that's the smallest stadium. I think you and I agree on this one, Charles. Yeah, am I thinking Wake Forest? Wake Forest. Going Grove Stadium. 31-5. Martin Stadium's 35-17. If yep. I'm not mistaken, Duke is probably in there. Cincinnati's in there. Yeah, well, those are the ones. Remember, BCS Conference was the key. Break throws it out short of the first down to Jason Hill. Terrell Thomas did a nice job of keeping him, I think, from that first down. It's going to be awfully close. Yeah, and you know, that's one of the few times when that outside move after the catch mm -hmm. may have cost you what you were seeking. See, if Jason Hill catches it, continues back inside, he might have a chance to slide his shoulders forward for the first down. But he, he you know, he flipped. He kind of baseball turned outside. And that allowed the defender to tackle him just a little bit shy of the first down marker. Well, they need a bob. You know, I'd say a foot. Think quarterback sneak here? Uh, I think that'd be smart. Well, I'd take the chance. Woolridge is in the backfield. Well, they're going to try the handoff. 
He's got the first down. It breaks into the secondary, lowers the shoulder, gets down to the 42-yard line. Bill Dover told us yesterday that's what makes his running backs so good. They're not afraid to initiate the contact and run into people. Earlier in the game, you alluded to Demondre Woolridge as a Robert, Lu Robert Newhouse clone. Look at these thighs. See that? They hit him in the legs, and he just plows right through that one. I mean, you're trying to stop him. You've got to hit him in the body square and wait for help. 14 yards on that aggressive run. And it's first through 10. Ball's at the 42-yard line. This time, nothing doing. The SC defense stacks him up. Mamaluga on the stop. He has five tackles tonight. He is such a monster. This young man, uh, you see the uh, underneath his eye, he's got R.I.P. Dad. His dad passed away. Uh, it's been a, you know, this, this young man is quiet and shy, but boy, when he gets on the football field, he is an animal. Yeah, he lost, he lost his father, Talatonu, last year, late in the season. And he's playing every play for him. And Bill Dova told us what he said. L58 jumps out of the screen, out of the screen <laughs> doesn't he? Yeah. Boy. In fact, his dad died two days before they played Texas. Break a little play action. Looking for somebody. The deep out route caught again by Michael Bumpus. Ellison on the coverage, but Bumpus able to get down to the 16-yard line. What a throw, though, by Alex Brink. 24 yards on the play. Hey, Parts, how about a little syncopated rhythm here? Look at him inside, then outside. Well, post corner move. Well thrown ball. Watch the throw and look at the protection. So you had everything. You had the protection, you had the throw, you had the catch. Everything worked well on that play for the Cougars. Nine receptions for Bumpus tonight. And now the Cougs are answering. First and goal from the three. He's answering the critics about his play in big games tonight. Looking, goes for the corner pattern again. Overthrown, pass intended for Brandon Gibson. Gibson just got turned around. I think the ball went to the wrong shoulder because this is the same route that Jason Hill beat for a touchdown. And he had Terrell Thomas again, but see how he threw it to the outside? Yeah. Right there on that play, Brandon Gibson thought the ball would come over the inside shoulder. And then when he had to turn outside, it took him a while to locate it. 30 seconds left in quarter number three. Second and goal from the three. Gibson goes wide to the left. Jason Hill on the near side. Hardy, straight ahead and running, dumped. May have gotten down to the two. Mamaluga again on the stop. He's got six tackles tonight. Just a sophomore out of Eureka, California. I just don't think they can run the ball in here yeah, against believe. USC. I think my man Pinball's got to be on the field. Michael Bumpus. Remember how Steve Smith was in the slot for USC, created a favorable matchup? Mm -hmm. I think maybe Mike Levenseller and Tim Rosenbaum might think the same thing here as we head to the fourth quarter. Head to quarter number four, USC leading by nine, 21-12. Third down and goal from the three. This has got to be two down territory for Washington State. Yeah, five bumpus. Great, rolling, rolling, sees the end zone, puts his head down. He has stood up and spun around at the three. I think they got to kick the field goal, though, because there it's going to be at least three yards. So he's got to kick yeah. it. Feely Moala is the one who came up with the hit, the sophomore from Buena Park, California. I think if he's inside the two, Ron, I think Bill Dover thinks about going for it. But here, you kick the field goal. You're only down nine now. Get it into a touchdown. Get it to a touchdown range. Now Longley's got a couple already. Lauren Longley. You can see two for two, both from 35 yards out. This is going to be a 20. is good. Langley three for three tonight. Alex Brink has done his part tonight. He's been able to run. He's been able to throw successfully. And his team now trails the number two team by six. Welcome back to Pullman, Washington. We have 14-13 left in the ball game. USC leading 21-15 after a field goal by that man. Warren Langley. He's got three tonight. So much at stake for USC. They've got so many different records riding on it. 
Pac-10 wins in a row. They won 17 consecutive road games. Their last loss was to Cal back on September 27th, regular season, and in the Pac-10. Bradford loses the ball, still loose. Washington State dives for it. Let's see. The officials say they have it, but that was before the second scrum. They're going to pull people off. Ball may change hands a number of times now. Oh, yeah. Guys are playing a little grabby here. We've got a Washington State player down. In fact, the USC trainers are the first ones out, and they're calling for somebody to come out and help. No, USC's got the ball back. One official said, Mike Brittingham, I think, is the man who came up with it. One official had already pointed Washington State. Didn't get the but didn't get the ball. The, the arms tucked underneath and it slid right through. Kind of like a hockey goalie through the five hole through the legs. This time it's just through the arms. And he tries to pick it up instead of falling on it. Takes the hit from Andy Mattingly, a backup linebacker. And right there, Washington State has the ball initially. Yeah. And in the scrum underneath, USC came up with it. Well, I saw it pop out after he had it. It popped out again. Well, the player is up and okay, which is good. See, that's 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 weight room time, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not saying Washington State hasn't put the time in in that situation until that final whistle blows. You got to battle for the ball. Booty. Looking, still looking, being chased, and he is going to be pulled down to the 16-yard line. That'll be a loss of about three on the play. Lance Brodus is the one who pulled him down. And look at the fumble again. See, right there, Washington State's on the football. But there's no possession at that point. See, the ball, to me, was still moving around. And now we see how it's still sliding yeah, around. See it. It's right in there. So now it becomes who wins the battle until the official gets there. Tries to go outside, cuts back in, gets up to the 23-yard line. Booty straight drop, fires over the middle. Smith caught, takes a licking, but he's got the first down. Eric Frampton lowered the boom on him, but he held on. What a catch by Smith again. And bounced up. Bunch formation. Steve Smith works the middle of the field. You never worry about him. Wow. 16 yard gain. Here's Craig Sager. Well, a big night for Steve Smith. We're going to see even more of him because Chris McFoy, the other wideout who is subbing for the injured Dwayne Jarrett, injured as well. McFoy catching a pass late in the second quarter, landed awkwardly, possible separated shoulder. X rays when he gets back to LA. All right, Snakes. Booty looking. Throwing tip incomplete. Corey Evans got a piece of it, the sophomore out of Lu Lena, Louisiana. You know, USC is seeking the big strike. You know, they're trying to get after it, but give Washington State's defense a lot of credit. Ever since Smith broke free earlier in the ball game, they've done a much better job downfield on the deep ball. Smith and Turner wide to the left. Second down and 10, 10 and a half to play. Vidal Hazelton the near side. They throw it out far side. Turner tries to get something, gets down to the 45 to the 44 yard line, brings up a third down. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Napa. USC will need five for that. Steve Dildon was on the stop, seven tackles tonight. Done a good job on third down this evening, haven't they? Third down, six of ten tonight for USC. Including that big fourth and ten that led to their last touchdown. But I've noticed they've been doing it, putting the ball in the hands of John David Booty to make the plays. A tight bunch formation again. Gable cuts back against the green. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Trent, 11 tackles tonight from that middle linebacker spot. Don't be surprised if he goes for it again. Fourth and short, he likes the field position. Well, John David Booty is not coming out. 
They were successful. We saw on our Hyundai drive of the game on fourth down. They're going to go for it again. It's fourth and two. They'll go and play action. They dump it off short. Smith reaches for the first down, and he's got it. It's going to be close, but I think he got it. Michael Willis tripped him up. I think you've got excellent eyes because I think he's got it by at least something yeah. about the football. Just running him across traffic, and then he catches it. And then right there, they go low, stays up, stays up, oh. and reaches out. Good job reaching out. I want to see where this is. Watch here. Is, he's just yeah. going to come right in here, and that's where Booty's going to hit him. And then he has to break the tackle in order to get the first down. Well, he came up quickly to make a stop. He gets hit, and he reached out. Back to live action. They keep it on the ground. Straight ahead running with C.J. Gable, the true freshman. Got the start versus Arkansas. Clock runs, 8.35 to play. They're mixing in just enough of, run, of a running game right now mm -hmm. that Washington State has to continue to respect it. Not many trick gimmick defenses by Washington State. They've just been playing them straight up for the most part. Second and seven. seven. Yeah. Another first down for USC inside the 30. And really, both stats are winning stats. Washington State nearly five yards of play. Yeah. You'll take that. Absolutely. And second and five for your play call. They're closing in on 300 yards. 287, I think, is the most anybody's gotten against USC this year. That was Arkansas. First and ten. Booty looking. Pass. Is it caught? No. Incomplete, they're saying. At the 15-yard line, Fred Davis go for it. You know, we talk about what they're getting on for play. How about third down? 7.4. Plus, they got a couple of plus 20-yard plays. Yes. And third down, the money down, isn't it? Oh, yes. You get the sense now? You know, Ron, we came into this game. We figured Washington State would throw the ball to run it. Mm -hmm. USC has shown the ability tonight to do the same thing. As, as this game is worn on, I'm seeing them throwing the ball in order to try and create running lanes as opposed to the opposite. Steve Smith, Brad Walker on the near side, Patrick Turner far side. They'll run it. Washington, Greg Trent, 13 tackles on the evening. Washington gets inside the 25, down about the 24-yard line. See, right now, Lane Kiffin is throwing on rundowns, first and ten. Mm -hmm. He's running on throwdowns, second and ten, throwing downs. See, have yeah, you noticed kind of a little first down? Yep. He likes to throw the football. Even on second and ten, he's not daunted, and he'll come back at you with the run. Yeah, Fred Davis checked back in along with Emmanuel Moody. They'll go with an empty backfield, three wide receivers left. Washington. Got the first down. They're trying to hold on to him for dear life as he works his way down to the 10. Hussein Abdullah on the stop. You know they're singing over on the USC sideline right now, don't you? John Sebastian's favorite hit, welcome back. Welcome back. Chauncey Washington. He's had the, he's had the pulled hamstring. Two years missed due to yeah. academics. And they say, they, you said it at the top of the show, Ron. He's had his best week of practice this fall. Yep. He's running awfully hard tonight. This is going to be the 17th play of this drive. It started at the 14-13 <laughs> mark. They've held the ball over eight minutes on this drive alone, and possession time is equal now. Moody looking for Smith, finding Smith. Touchdown, Smith! Ten receptions, 175 yards, two touchdowns now for Steve Smith. Make that 186 yards. He's absolutely fearless, Ron. They keep isolating him in the middle of the field versus linebackers. And their recovered responsibility area. That was Steve Dildine, number 49. And boy, was that a well-thrown football. Mm -hmm. Great route. Excellent throw. Touchdown Trojans. And now they're saying it's his 11th catch of the night. He had 12 coming in tonight. Not bad. You go from 12 to 23 in one night. I gotta tell you, it seems like 22 catches. Oh, he's been all he's over. He's made every big catch this evening. And Mario Donello's extra point is good. It's been the Steve Smith Show, the senior from Canoga Park, California. 11 catches, 186 yards, and two touchdowns. USC is trying to get their Pac-10 winning streak up another notch, and they're 
road winning streak up another notch, but they've been in a battle tonight with the Cougars from Washington State. 28-15 is the score right now. We've got 5.52 to play in the ball game. That drive lasted about 8.21 on 17 plays for USC. I think that's the biggest key, Ron, is how much time they yeah. took off the clock and paid it off with a score. Uh, not a lot of kickoff returns today. I don't want to split the upright. So. Now, if you're Washington State, Charles, uh, you have the tendency of just starting to air it out, which is not your game and how you've been successful tonight, which could backfire on you. But you've got to up the tempo no matter what. Doesn't mean uh, I'm with you. It doesn't mean you got to go out and just go crazy and play a little flag football and fling it. Yeah. But you've got to up the tempo of the line of scrimmage and keep it moving. And I don't think I think they're going to, you know, go without huddle now and try to keep their play calls going. Now both teams have two timeouts left. Closing in on five minutes to play in the ball game. Great. He's played exceptional tonight. Flips it out to the outside. Jason Hill on the reception. His sixth talk, the catch of the game, and that is a first down. Early in the game, we gave you our orbits uh, keys to the game for Washington State. Let's update them. Well, we started out with them with show and tell, right? A lot of formations, a lot of motion. We've seen that, but look at the yardage that's generated. 292 total yards, start and finish. Zero turnovers, three points in the first quarter. They did just fine on the start. Now they need to finish. Already know Trent Edwards and Christo Bruce. Five sacks last week against the Stanford quarterback. One tonight, but he's played a really good, really nice football game overall. It's first and ten, break, goes over the middle, passes caught by Cody Boyd, the tight end. Second reception, it goes down to the 45-yard line. 25 yards on the pickup. Yeah, Ken Norton Jr. and Rocky Seto, the linebacker and DB coach respectively for USC. I know what they'll be working on this week. Location of the football while it's in the air. Boyd's a big target at 6'8. Full basketball player. He posted up on that one. Great. Going long. Inside the 20 yard line. Brandon Gibson. Kevin Thomas on the coverage. See, to me, this is back to back plays where the defensive back and the linebacker don't know the ball's there until it's too late. Hard for them to locate it. Kevin Harris. Excuse me, Kevin Thomas was trying to play through the receiver's arms when he thought the ball was arriving. A really nice throw by Alex Brink. And Gibson on the near side. They run it. Straight ahead, running down to the five-yard line is Dwight Tardy. That'll be another first down. First and goal after the pickup of 11. 442 to play in the ball game. Do you get the sense that USC exhaled a little bit after that last they touchdown and thought they might have deflated Washington State a bit? And Washington State is showing a great heart tonight right back at them and not using that much clock. You saw what they've done in the red zone. A touchdown and three field goals. First and goal from the five. Great. Looking, has time. Goes to the corner of the end zone and there's nobody there. Gibson was the closest person to it. Second and goal from the five. This is tough yardage against this quick USC defense. And not only that, your field is condensed now. Oh, yeah. So now running by a defensive back is not really an option. You have to be a little more physical in your route to make sure you get separation in order to catch the football. So now they're back on the 10-yard line, second and goal from the 10. Bumpus is in the slot, top of the screen. Tardy's in the backfield. Here comes the pressure. They get it out to Tardy. He's got some room for the pylon. Do they call it? Do they call it? Touchdown, Washington State. Tim Rosenbaugh, he showed all of his receivers to one side and threw it backside to his running back, Dwight Tardy, and what an extension and effort to get into the end zone for the touchdown for the Cougars. The ball within six, the extra point. And it is good. One more look. The redshirt freshman, first receiving touchdown of the year. What a great job. But watch the extension and the effort by Tardy. Determined to get it into the end zone before Taylor Mays can bump him off. 
And the Washington State Cougars have cut it to a six-point lead. State. Too early for outside kick, huh? See, I, I think so because, you know, field position, 418 still left. One three and out gets you the ball back, even yeah. though you're down to just one timeout. This is going to be about two yards deep. C.J. Gables bringing it out. Gets up to the 20-yard line. They're trying to strip the ball as he gets up to the 27-yard line. Steve Dildine, another tackle. 366 total yards for Washington State tonight. Thompson in motion. Booty's going to put it up. Looking. Pass is tipped in the air. Incomplete. M. Christo Bruce again. He has a sack. He has a pass batted down and about five tackles. You know, Turner Sports does a lot of NBA basketball, don't they? And you're always hearing the term. That defender is long That's in right. basketball. And Christo Bruce was long on that play and stopped the clock in addition to batting the ball away. Second down and 10. Chauncey Washington to the 33-yard line. That'll be about third down and four. Scott Davis penetrated on that, caused the play to disrupt. How about that? Last couple of drives for USC, 182 yards, but 26 plays over 13 and a half minutes. But they really, really need to get four more downs right here. If they're punting the ball away to Washington State with this much time left, Alex Brinks in a pretty good rhythm right now for the Cougars. Third down and five. Washington State showing blitz. Booty, the quick look in, caught at the 40-yard line, first down, Patrick Turner. His fifth reception of the evening. At USC, they don't ask you to step up, they expect you to step up. And earlier in the game, Patrick Turner was having his issues, trying to fill the shoes of Dwayne Jarrett, but there could not have been a better time for a nice eight-yard completion for the sophomore from Tennessee. Well, Lane Kiffin calls him the next great wide receiver at USC. That was one to build on right there. He had four receptions for the year. He's got five tonight. Fresh set of downs for USC, 2.45 to play. Now they'll keep it on the ground. Nothing doing, no game. Mike Grace on the stop, the sophomore out of Inglewood, California. You go back to that completion to Patrick Turner. Mm -hmm. Not only was it a nice catch by the sophomore who's had his issues this evening, but how sharply thrown was that football by John David Booty? And I think they made the point for me that I've been saying most of the second half. They've asked John David Booty to take this game in his hands a lot this half. Hawk ticking away at two minutes. Only one timeout left for Washington State. Turner goes wide to the left. Do the snap and they get it off. Washington. Washington State surrounds him. He's going to lose a couple on the play with 150 to play. Corey Evans on the stop. Washington State hoping to hold on to the last timeout for the on the offensive end. They won't call it now. They're going to try and have make USC punt before they think about that timeout. Remember, they're averaging 7.5 yards on third down. They need five more than that. They need 12. It's the ball game right here for Washington State on third and 12. Smith will go in the slot. Walker to his right. Washington in the backfield. Washington stuffed at the 40-yard line. Timeout. Fourth down. Timeout. They need it. And they will call a timeout. 68 seconds left of the ball game. Let's take you back a couple of years. The USC Trojans trail Washington State by six late in the game. Carson Palmer connected on a 55-yard TD with Mike Williams that tied it. Ryan Colleen missed the ensuing point after. It also missed a 52-yard field goal in overtime, but Cougars kicker Drew Dunning connected on a 35-yarder. Washington State won at 30-27. That was the last time they beat the USC. Tonight. Snapper is Will Collins. The high snap. Oh, boy, Charles, if they would have taken your advice. 
Bumpus will fair catch it at the 23 yard line, 37 yards on the kick. And I'll tell you what, Wojnik saved disaster on that play. Once again, the clock will start once they get the ready signal. Well, once they mark it ready, right now the chain crew, don't think the chain crew doesn't live in this area. They're not moving all that fast, are they? <laughs> Good point. You know, that's part, that's part of having a home stadium, but Washington State on the line, ready to go, well coached. Great. Flat, caught, compass, out of bounds, clock will stop, it only took five seconds. Everything is sidelines, unless it's a first down play. In other words, if you can get a first down, the clock will stop to set the chains. But you don't make the extra move and pick up yards and stay in bounds. You're getting out of bounds now if you're Washington State. Mr. Redshirt, freshman, second down and eight. 59 to play. Brink throws it into the flat. Pass incomplete, intended for Jason Hill. Third down and eight for Bill Doba's squad. And now for, for, for Pete Carroll and Nick Holt in, in tandem on defense. Do you rush Alex Brink with more than four here? Well, they only have four on the line They're right now. They're showing four. See if anyone runs into it late. No. Nobody does. They back off a little bit. Brink over the middle. Clock. Cody Boyd, the tight end. First down for Washington State. 50 seconds left. Clock stopped. Brink gets him up to the line quickly. See, USC's personality is to go get you. The personality is not to lay back very much. I wouldn't be surprised if they change up at some point and try and get to Brink. Brink in the flat. Hill makes the catch. Gets down to the 50-yard line. Clock is running. It will stop for the change of the sticks. First and 10, 39 to play. See, what Nick Holt and Pete Carroll have going for them, his field goal range doesn't matter. It has to be a touchdown. Oh, yeah. But a touchdown, an extra point beat them as the clock begins to tick. 30 seconds to play. Steps up, throws, passes, tipped, almost intercepted, incomplete. Dallas Sarks is the one who got his hand on it, playing in front of all his family, some of which are Washington State grads. Yeah, grandfather was a Golden Gloves boxer here at Wazoo. Nice job by Dallas Sarks, sinking into coverage and almost coming up with a game-ending in interception. Second down and 10, 25 seconds. They need 50 yards. And USC put a fresh pass rusher on the field, and Jeff Schweiger, number 54. That's his forte. Brink steps up, looks, throws the deep out, passes tipped again, incomplete. Great coverage by Terrell Thomas of USC. Bumpus was the intended receiver, 19 seconds left. Terrell Thomas beaten for a touchdown earlier by Jason Hill. As you said, great coverage. And if, if Ray Mawaluga does not come into the play, I think he comes down with the ball he tipped. Yeah, that's a good point. 19 seconds left for Bill Dova. Bumpus is in the slot, top of your screen. They've got break. He throws it away incomplete, but we have a penalty flag with 14 seconds left. I think they'll be taking them, moving them back because yeah. the Hail Mary comes into play. On the offense, number 60. 10 yard penalty, previous spot, still third down. See, now, Ron, you got to think Hail Mary soon because there's only 14 on yeah. the clock and no timeouts. If you leave it up near midfield, Alex Brink might have enough arm for that. You move it back, right? Now we're going to really test out his arm. Well, it's third down and 20, but that's elementary at this point since there's only 14 left. Here comes the pressure again. Brink runs away from it. Throws over the middle. Caught. First down, Washington State inside the 40. Michael Bumpus with five seconds left. See, and the clock stops. It sets the chains. That gives you the chance to throw the last Hail Mary. That's how crucial the first down was. If he doesn't get the first down, time probably runs out before they can run another play. He'll spike it, and that's what he does. Two seconds go off the clock. This will be it. One last play. See, they got to go victory and throw it in the end zone now. And Pete Carroll's going with his victory defense. 
He's not concerned about the rush. He's concerned about getting the ball batted down deep in the end zone. But oh boy, Michael Bumpus getting that first down rod gave them this opportunity. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get the first down, the clock runs out trying to get up to the line of scrimmage. Bumpus 11 catches 112 yards, but it's come down to this. Three wide receivers yeah. five to the right. Three man rush. Break looking. Throws. Ball. Intercepted USC. They win the ball game. Taylor Mays, the true freshman, his first collegiate interception. USC will walk out of Pullman with a 28-22 win. Let's look at that last play of the game. That was the old Big Ben, beat the clock, whatever you want to call it, Hail Mary. They gave it an effort, Taylor Mays, the freshman, they had it well covered. He goes, all you want to do is either bat it down or intercept it, and he gets the interception and pads his stats. USC wins. For Charles Davis, Craig Good night from Pullman, Washington. Final score again, USC winning at 28-22.